On Monday, April 8th, the Wii U and 3DS online servers will shut down forever. The day after my birthday. So, thanks for the gift, Nintendo. <laughs> some of you might think this isn't that big of a deal because most of the Wii U and even some 3DS games are already succeeded by new entries and enhanced ports on the Nintendo Switch. But there are unique aspects about these original games that don't carry over to Switch. So, I'm going to go over some games here on the Wii U and 3DS that have unique features which you won't be able to use anymore because they didn't carry over into their sequels or ports on Switch. Not to say you won't be able to experience these unique qualities ever again since most of these games have offline modes anyway, but there's just something about using them online that will never be replaced. Let's talk about Mario Kart 8 on Wii U. The Nintendo Switch version, the deluxe port, may seem exactly the same, but there are a few gameplay differences. Like, if you want to play online at 59 FPS instead of 60. <laughs> that was a joke. But other than that, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has dual item gameplay, meaning you can carry two items at a time, but on Wii U, you could only use one item at a time. Some argue that the dual item gameplay of the deluxe version makes the experience too chaotic. So so if you ever wanted to play Mario Kart 8 online with just single items, well, this is your last chance to do it. That and the online battle mode is different on Wii U too, as there it reuses the standard race tracks. It makes the experience rather different. I wouldn't say it's necessarily better or worse, but it's unique. However, what I'm really going to miss is playing Mario Kart 8 online against other people while using the Wii wheel. I know the deluxe version has those little Joy-Con wheels, but it's just not the same, man. So, goodbye nostalgic Mario Kart Wii days. I should have appreciated you more back then, I'm sorry. But you know, at least Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is mostly similar to the Wii version, so there's really not too much you're going to be losing when the Wii U servers shut down. But when it comes to Mario Kart 7, there's going to be some bigger losses. Like, Honey Queen is completely unplayable in Mario Kart 8, so you won't be able to bring her into any more online matches. Also, 7 has a stages that did not return in 8, such as DS Luigi's Mansion, SNES Mario Circuit 2, Nintendo 64 Luigi's Raceway, GBA Bowser Castle 1, N64 Koopa Beach, GCN Dino Dino Jungle, DS DK Pass, and DS Airship Fortress. Gotta give a shout out to PK Sparks on YouTube for doing a video on these stages just a few short days ago. He really helped me find out which of these tracks are unplayable in Mario Kart 8. But I think the worst offense is the loss of first person mode. No longer will we be able to challenge people online in first person and 3D. The online experience in Mario Kart 7 was wholly unique and it stinks that it's going to be going away very, very soon. Now let's move on to Super Smash Bros. 4, or as it's better known, Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. What a very simple name. I'm sure Nintendo was very afraid of confusing people after the whole Wii U fiasco. Sure, every character in this game is available in Ultimate and then some, but a lot of them look and feel different, such as Link using his Twilight Princess model, and then there's a the version of Ganondorf that plays like complete garbage. That and Smash for Wii U and 3DS feel completely different than Ultimate. I felt Smash 4 was a overall slower game and Ultimate sped things up a bit, and I recall air dodging feeling different as well. It just goes to show how each Smash Bros game is different in big and small ways. But the biggest loss is that we won't be able to play these six stages online anymore since they are not in Ultimate. Those being Jungle Hijinks, Orbital Gate Assault, Pac Maze, Pyrosphere, Rainbow Road, and Woolly World. There was also the Miiverse stage, but that was never playable online anyway. But speaking of Miis, let's talk about Wii Sports Club. Remember Wii Sports Club? I never really got into Wii Sports Club because I was and still am confused by its pricing. Wii Sports Club gave you the option to play online, much like its successor, Nintendo Switch Sports. However, Switch Sports does not have the following two games, baseball and boxing. And no, swordplay is not a replacement for boxing. Don't feed me those lies. This really stinks because baseball and boxing were my two favorite sports in Wii Sports. And to see them not carried over into Nintendo Switch Sports is just a bummer. And it stings even more knowing I won't be able to pummel my friends with boxing gloves online anymore. I'm telling you once again, the sword is just not the same. 
Speaking of games that aren't the same, Super Mario Maker. I loved the first Mario Maker game, and while 2 was a good sequel, I didn't really get that same satisfaction of making stages because the Wii U gamepad was just so perfect for that. And as we know, once the Wii U Online shuts down, all those user-created levels will be completely wiped from existence. So I urge you, right now, when this video is done at least, check out our video on all our Mario Maker levels you should play before they're gone forever. And while you're at it, you should also subscribe to us and hit that notification bell for more Nintendo videos like this one. Anyway, let's get back to talking about Mario Maker and why 2 is vastly inferior to the first game. One, because 2 is incompatible with Amiibo, which was just a huge blow to my interest in Mario Maker 2. One of the first things I did in Mario Maker 1 was add the Sonic Amiibo just to watch the collapse of the space-time continuum. And the best part is you could put these Amiibo costumes in your custom stages so other people could play your own Sonic-themed level or what have you. In fact, there is an incredible seven-level series that uses all 153 Amiibo costumes. Nintendo made a great video about that, so you should definitely check it out. Or download the stages yourself. There are also some creative exploits in Super Mario Maker, like stacking pipes on top of each other so they could go to different areas. Andre demonstrated this in 2016 with his Datadyne Perfect Dark stage. These features and exploits made Super Mario Maker levels an absolute blast to make, and yeah, Mario Maker 2 might have added slopes, but we would trade all of that for these other features to return. Now let's move on to another 3DS game, Animal Crossing New Leaf, which I vastly prefer over New Horizons, and I think a lot of people agree with me on that. If not, that's fine. New Horizons had some really great customizable features to it, but there's just something about the charm of New Leaf that wasn't replicated in New Horizons. And once 3DS Online shuts down, players won't be able to visit other people's towns online, use the Dream Suite, or play with each other on Tortimer Island. At least local wireless will still be available, so you can get your buddies together, bring their old 3DSs, and relive the glory days of 2013 before everything went to hell. Luckily, New Leaf, much like the rest of the Animal Crossing games, is still a perfectly suitable offline game, but it'll still be a bummer to lose those online features. Finally, we have to talk about Splatoon 1, which might be the biggest loss from the Wii U online shutdown. Yep, there's a single player campaign, but come on, everyone plays Splatoon games for their online. In fact, Splatoon 1 still has an extremely healthy player base for a reason, such as the many maps not available in Splatoon 2 or 3, like Salt Spray Rig, Urchin Underpass... Wait, that's it? I thought there were a lot more Splatoon 1 arenas that didn't come back, but it looks like a lot more got added to Splatoon 3 that weren't already in 2. Even then, those stages had a lot of changes to them. Many of them were minuscule, sure, but they can still make a huge difference in an online setting. Our friend Captain Burgerson has some great videos about the changes in these stages, so check them out. I will say that even though the majority of Splatoon 1 stages came back in 2 and 3, they felt more varied and distinct in 1. As because of the changes made in 2 and 3, mostly 3, they all kind of look and feel the same to each other. And that's not even mentioning that most of the new stages in 3 have annoying bottlenecks in the center that are just no fun to be a part of. This meme on the Splatoon subreddit says it all. It's the reason why I didn't really come back to this game after launch day, because it just didn't feel as fun to me, whereas I put a ton of hours in the original Splatoon game. So yeah, come April 8th at 4pm Pacific, Splatoon 1 will essentially be a dead game. Unless you use Pretendo, but I doubt many people are going to want to go through the effort of putting Pretendo on their Wii U to keep playing Splatoon 1. And those are the unique features that we will be losing once the Wii U and 3DS online services shut down on April 8th. Many memories were made with these online services, especially in games like Animal Crossing, Splatoon 1, Mario Kart, and it stinks to see that we will never relive those glory days again. I guess that's the nature of online games, but I can't help but feel a little sad. I should probably pop Splatoon 1 back into my Wii U to get some more matches of Turf War in for old time's sake. Which reminds me, we're going to be live on the channel to celebrate the Wii U and 3DS online services before they shut down at 4pm Pacific. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when we go live on that. Until next time, bye bye